Hey guys, I'm going to be streaming uh, this whole process of prepping for Air uh, 6.05 over on my Twitch. Uh, so make sure you guys come and hang out there. And uh, without further ado, let's get into the video. So follow me on Twitch and join my Discord. Hey guys, what's up? For Daddy here. Uh, today I'm going to be making a new kind of video that I want to try to make these like at the nearing the end of every patch. And it's just kind of going to be the stuff that uh, you should really do before the next patch drops. So these are going to be focused on non-combat and uh, non-crafting at the beginning. And then at the end of the video, I'll talk about the crafting stuff, which can basically be the way that you make like a ton of money. If you've been leveling your crafters and gatherers alongside me during these videos, uh, this will be the way that you really cash out. Uh, so I'll be going over that and I'll also be going over some stuff even if you don't have any crafters up. So let's get into the video. So first off is the non or the non crafting like combat focus stuff. This is pretty simple because there isn't really too much you have to do. They're releasing two major bits of content with 6.05, that being the Savage Raid tier, uh, as well as the treasure maps. Now, I'm not a world first raider or anything like that, so my focus is going to be around giving milking those guys for like as much money as possible. Uh, <laughs> so that's going to be more on the tail end of the video. But obviously, you want to make sure you have pretty good gear and item levels for going into that. You should have gotten your item level ready for Pandemonium, but if not, uh, I'm going to provide a link in the description to the Balance Discord, which can show you like the best gear sets. The important thing is, is that uh, there are certain items that you don't really want to get from Pandemonium normal right now, because you'll be able to get them from Pandemonium uh, or, or from the new tombstones as well as uh, as well as you'll be able to uh, just replace them with crafted gear because some of the stats like like the tank top and stuff are really bad so you're gonna want to uh, hold off on those so you don't have to waste your your pandemonium stuff so if you want to do that intelligently it's a little late for that because a reset just happened but uh, I'll provide a link in the description for that as far as uh, getting that gear is uh, otherwise the things that you want to be doing is stocking up on aphorism tomes uh, you can get aphorism tombstones in a lot of different ways. You can get them from doing hunt trains, which I've discussed in my previous videos, link in the description. You can also get them just from doing your roulettes and stuff like that. And these are going to be really useful because this is what you're going to spend on, uh, you can buy, you'll be able to buy, um, items you can put on the market board and sell for a lot of money that the crafters will be using. So this will be a great money maker and that's something you should definitely do and just have them ready for any content that they release with that. Um, the other thing that I suggest you guys do is stock up on maps. Right now, the uh, the, Kum the Kumbira skin maps, which will be the ones that open portals in 6.05 when the Excitatron 4000 comes out, uh, those maps right now are going for really cheap because they're pretty bad because they don't open portals. But sure enough, once they open portals, they'll go to the price of the other maps, which is like 60 or 70k. So here are some ways that you can hold on to multiple maps if you want to stockpile them. You can decipher one of them. You can hold one of them. You can put one in each of your retainers. You can put one in your saddlebag. And then you can also mail them to your friends. So if you have friends that you want to go along with this with, you can send a bunch of them to your friends and hold on to more of them that way as well. That's what we're doing because I'll be doing my map streams uh, again when that starts up. So look forward to that. The last thing that I'm going to recommend is just to make gill while you can. Uh, things are going to get really expensive at the, every patch, basically. Uh, so you're going to want to have that gill available. I'll be making tons of gill making guides when it comes out, but you know, you want to have some money uh, on the side. And I have some methods that I, again, have linked in the description for doing that. And that's in my other videos that I've been uploading the past couple weeks. So that's pretty much it for, uh, for the non-crafting. Uh, there's some other creators like Mr. Happy and stuff that are more focused on raiding that have made videos on what to do in that regard. But this is more so focused on the casual player in case you uh, are just wondering like what's like mandatory to do. Just getting your tombstone gear and getting your uh, getting your raid lockouts done and stuff like that. Uh, we're gonna move on to the more in-depth part of this guide, which is the crafting one. So uh, stay tuned for that coming up now. All right, guys, so let's get into the crafting and gathering portion of the video. Uh, I'm going to go over some of the resources that I've used to be able to prep, and then I'm going to go over what I personally do. Um, so first of all, I just want to go over the things that you should really have unlocked by now. And if you don't have them unlocked, you still have time to get them. But uh, yeah. So the first thing is the crafting prep that you need. 
So you need to be able to have unlocked the regional folklore uh, tomes. And those are bought with white scripts, with white gatherer scripts. And uh, you can purchase them right here. So there are a few ways to get white gatherer scripts. I've went over it in, uh, in my collectibles video, which I'll link in the description because there's a lot of stuff to cover here. But uh, if you don't know how to get white scripts, you can check out my gatherers video for information on how to do that. And you can spend those scripts on these like, uh, these folklore tokens and these unlock special nodes. These nodes supply what will be the crafting materials for the upcoming master recipes. So master recipes are purchased for each class for 1200 white scripts, which means that you will need a total of 9,600 scripts if you want to be able to buy all these right when the patch drops. So obviously you should be capped on your white scripts for crafters for that. Uh, but if not, uh, what you can do is you can make a bunch of the collectibles that you turn in uh, and then have those stacked up like in a retainer or something like that. And uh, I'm just gonna really quickly go over the best collectibles to make for that right now. All right, so I'm just gonna go over these here and credit again to Ash10. If you guys haven't checked out Ash10's channel, uh, they provide a lot of the resources and information that I uh, sort of, you know, put out here in a little bit uh, more beginner friendly terms as well. So please give their channel a look out and there's gonna be, I'm gonna mention their guides a few times in this video. But uh, the ones that I think you should make for white scripts are these ones here, the rarefied chondrite needle as well as the rarefied chondrite lapidary hammer. There's a couple of reasons behind this. One, these are really stupid easy to gather the stuff uh, here. I actually would probably just make this one because wind crystals are kind of hard to get right now. I find myself going through tons of those and you use them when making both of these, so, um, or making the star quartz. So the integral lumber is really easy to make, so is the star quartz and the chondrite. You can basically make these just by uh, uh, quick synthing, and because they're all high level recipes, you get a ton of spirit bond when you're uh, quick synthing these as well. So as long as you have all your materia slots uh, filled up, you'll get a ton of spirit bond and you use like your better crowned pie and your superior spirit bond potion, then you'll be able to get a ton of spirit bond. And that'll give you the crafting material that you need to meld uh, when the patch drops. So what you can do is you can basically make a whole bunch of these and you can just toss them into your, uh, you can make this one too, but the anite whetstone's kind of hard to get right now, but yeah. Uh, so you can make a whole bunch of these, toss them in your retainer, and then you're ready to go. Uh, you can take a look at the collectability rating and I'll put the number on screen of exactly how many you need to get the whole number here. I'll do the math and I'll, I'll put it up on, on the screen. So that's how many you need to make of, of uh, these if you want to uh, get your, your all of your master recipes right away and you just want to put stuff on the market board like right away as well. It's going to be really useful for that. So that's basically getting your crafter scripts maxed is going to be really useful to do. Um, yeah, so you can pre-make all those collectibles. Okay, so the next part of this video is a little bit uh, tough to explain, but just bear with me and hopefully by the end of it you'll understand. I just want to go over what the old recipes looked like in Shadowbringers that we were crafting at patch, I guess it would be 5.05. .05. And I'll try to use that in conjunction with the current materials that, are, that we can see right now in Endwalker to try to put together sort of a mock recipe so you know what you should be harvesting. That's what I've done and that's what uh, should give you a good idea of what to prepare for the expansion. So uh, yeah, let's take a look at one of those recipes now. Okay, so if we take a look at this recipe here uh, for the facet male of fending, we can take a look at the different things it requires and we'll go one by one and draw parallels to Endwalker. So uh, the tungsten seal here, it was, it's crafted with uh, tungsten ore, which is a high level crafting node. So the equivalent for that would be the chondrite, most likely. And then the multifaceted abrasive is something that is purchased with tomes. So this would be a crafting recipe that you would buy with your aphorism tomes here. And that would be how you make that item. The prismatic ingot is made with primstone and multifaceted abrasive, which is another tome item, but the primstone is from the folklore. So an example of that would be uh, the lunar adamantite, for example, or maybe the rhyme dolomite. And that would be the example for that, plus another item. So you can sort of start to get the picture here where it's usually one tombstone item and then one item from the folklore node, or perhaps it's one uh, high level harvesting item. The ethereal silk follows a similar process where it is the ethereal cocoon. And that's obviously, that would be the golden cocoon. And then uh, the multifaceted cotton cloth would be another uh, tombstone item. And then you have the deep gold nugget, which is a high level crafting nugget, and that's equivalent to be the high durium nugget. And then the grade two vitality alkahest, that will have a crafting method that will be the grade 
six Alkahest, and that would be a tombstone item, a aether sand, and I'll discuss the methods of obtaining the aether sand in a moment, and then a item that could be something like the double-edged herb. And so together you would have all the items that you need. So the way, the reason why I think it's important to look at it that way is because you can look at that and go, okay, well, like that's what I need to harvest. I need to make sure I'm getting these folklore nodes, getting some high level craft materials and then getting aether sand. Uh, so now I'm just gonna quickly go over how to get these. Uh, you should have the folklore nodes by now. So getting these ephemeral and legendary nodes should be absolutely no problem at all. I use this add-on that's called Gather Buddy. Uh, I did mention the time nodes, but since then, somebody from my Discord has turned me onto this plugin and how useful it is. So if you use the XIV launcher, uh, you can install Gather Buddy just from the main launcher, and that's super useful, but you can also use the time nodes website if you don't want to use add-ons, uh, which I have put in the description. But basically, it'll show you the different nodes, and you can set alarms for them as well. So uh, just pay attention to the ones that I'm mentioning here. And these are the ones that are the ephemeral nodes. Now I have a clip here of me harvesting an ephemeral node. They are four strength collectibles, so they're pretty difficult. You need to go in there with a scrutiny and then a brazen or meticulous, depending on if you like to gamble or not. And then you can uh, restore the collectability there and you should just see me doing that now. So once you have that, you can cast ethereal reduction on it and that will turn it into aether sand. Uh, there, is, that is how you get the end stone aether sand, the end wood aether sand, and the moonlight aether sand. Uh, the end tide aether sand uh, will be likely used, um, although not as prevalently as the other ones, so you shouldn't need as much. Uh, but you can get that from uh, spear fishing here. Uh, I have it on the map, and I'm doing it on the screen right now. You should be able to see that. And basically, um, you're looking for these fish that have this little thin, uh, thin marker in the middle, like it's a medium sized fish, but it's a thinner hitbox. And you can hit that and you can use nature's bounty to get a better better quality rating on it. And that will give you the aether sand. So what I was doing is I was harvesting these aether sand nodes and then between them, uh, either doing the fishing or I was getting the, um, the rare or the, uh, the unspoiled nodes that give me these good items. So like I would, for example, hit up the stone hard water and rhyme dolomite node to get rhyme dolomite in garlamald and then i would uh i'd go and get like the palm chippings right after and you have time to do both of those and that also gives you a whole bunch of spirit bond as well and so you get tons of materia and tons of those items so that should get you all prepared uh that's what i've been doing to prep and i'll be doing that in my stream again tonight and just getting ready that way so basically just to go over all those concepts again uh what I think you should do is you should unlock your regional folklore, first of all. Uh, second of all, you should max your crafter scripts out and make sure you have all your crafter recipe book uh, collectibles like stashed away in a retainer or something like that. Um, then I suggest stocking up on 40 durability crafts. Uh, and you can do that while you're harvesting materials for the collectibles as well. Um, so that means stocking up on Arcean Velvet or Scarlet Mocha Cloth or uh, just any of those really. Uh, Blue Zircon, things like that. Then I think you should stock up on Crafter's Materia, which you'll be getting during this point in time by uh, spirit, via Spirit Bonding. And then um, I think you should have each of your Aether Sands on hand, which I've just went over. Finally, I think it's important that you decide what market you want to corner and decide what gear you want to focus on. Now, uh, this is an extra treat for those who stayed towards the end of this video, because I know people click off by now. But I'm going to tell you guys the stuff that I'm going to be crafting. And if you play on Genova, do not undercut me, please. Um, so this is my suggestion on like how to find the best stuff to be able to craft. So right now on discords like The Balance that are posting gear guides, there's a you, you might have to look around for this, but there is uh, team craft links that tell you what the best in slot is. So I would take a look at those and see where the raid gear from Pandemonium Normal isn't the best gear. The reason why is because those like so for instance the uh, tank top, the Pandemonium top, gives you like skill speed and debt or something like that. So it's really bad. So that'll probably be something that the first week raiders replace with the crafted gear. They're not just going to buy a full set of crafters gear necessarily, they're just going to buy the optimal stuff that they need. So for example, something that you might want to make is the facet circlet of fending or like the equivalent in, in Endwalker or whatever they call it, the male of fending and the, uh, the legs, the, um, the legs of fending as well. 
that might be something that you want to make. Um, or, or, or the equivalent. I think focusing on tanks and healers is a good idea, but obviously you'll make money making no matter what uh, they'll all sell. But I would decide on an item, so be like, all right, well, I want to make this tank uh, chest plate. So, or I want to make these tank pants. And I know they're probably going to use an ingot and stuff like that, and focus your gathering efforts around that. So maybe focus on getting chondrite and wind crystals to make it into bars and whatnot. Uh, that's just something that I suggest you guys do in this next week. Uh, hopefully this um, was pretty useful. So I just want to touch on one last thing and then we'll get into the outro of the video. So the last thing I want to touch on is just uh, one last thing you can craft to prep. And it's really quick and that's just the, the best crafting food. Again, this is credit to Ash10 for this. But the crafting food that you want is the Sayo Vonu as well as the uh, crafting drought that I have on screen here. So both of these are the items that you're gonna wanna craft as well. And I suggest just having, you know, like 20 or 30 of those on hand if you're gonna spend the whole first week crafting just so you don't run out of those as well. So that is basically all the prep that I suggest you guys do. So let's get into the uh, outro of the video. All right, guys, this is the outro of the video. Uh, this is basically a new series that I'm trying. If you guys like it, let me know and I'll make more. Uh, be sure to share it around and stuff. I'm really hoping this could be something that helps my subscribers and helps the channel a lot. Uh, I know it's not a typical like clickbaity sort of thing, but uh, I just hope that it, it brings more people towards the channel and can be something really useful for you guys so you guys know exactly what I'm doing. I'll be streaming all this prep that I'm doing again over on Twitch, so you can check that out there as well. And you'll be able to... Uh, to watch and maybe prep along. I think that'd be really fun. You know, maybe if you'll play on Genova, we can do this stuff together. So hopefully this was useful to you guys. I wanna keep my promise to you guys of making a ton of money, so we can do that. Um, thanks for watching my video again, and I will see you guys uh, probably in 6.05. Cheers.